So Kanye West was officially banned from performing at the Grammys this year. Now, if you've heard us talk in the past about the Grammys, I personally feel like it's just a, uh, you know, a bureaucracy at this point. Um, they just kind of award people who go along with the things in their agenda and the people who don't, you know, they try to shun. But to this point, they... They banned Kanye due to concerning on online behavior, they called it. Um, so this is due to him dragging Trevor Noah into the situation with himself, uh, his ex-wife, and Pete Davidson. And uh, I, I suppose Trevor Noah said something about the situation. And Kanye, in return, called him um, a racial slur. So he called him a coon, which is a derogatory racial slur uh, towards black people in particular. It's kind of like saying you're a, a sellout for those who don't know. Um, so now the reason I'll go into this from a few different arenas. Uh, so the reason that that's problematic um, would be because... Any anybody who has a different opinion, what happens? Honestly, a lot of times it happens in the reverse uh, that people who are or, or black people more so who are on the left side of the political spectrum would try to call any black person who's on the right side of the political spectrum any any racial slur because they don't vote with the monolithic thinking, which I talk about a lot. Uh, really does not make if you actually look at at the policies and what people say they believe in a majority of like black communities really doesn't make sense why there is just a large monolithic thinking when it comes to political um, circumstances. Uh, so this, this happened recently where uh, Larry Elder, who's a politician uh, and like a talk show host was running for uh, governor in California. And the difference in this situation was that there were, publications, um, well-respected publications saying that Larry Elder was the white f uh, or the black face of white supremacy simply because he was, he is a conservative and he's on the right side of the political spectrum. Um, what I don't like about this situation, I, there's a few things I don't like on both sides. Uh, and I usually try to give the perspective of actually helping people, uh, digest the information, uh, so what I don't like about that perspective is that the, the same people who, you know, cry foul when Kanye calls Trevor Noah that term, which he shouldn't, um, don't cry foul when widely respected publications, I think it was the LA Times, uh, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but uh, this was a publication that told Larry Elder, a black man, that he was a the, the black face of white supremacy because he didn't go along with a lot of their agendas, which just objectively speaking, a lot of their agendas are not good for black people. They're not good for anybody, um, but they certainly are good for black people. And he was pointing out some of that. Um, so something that Trevor, Trevor Noah stated, which is true, and I agree with him, is that, um, and I hope he holds to his words, are that just because you know another black person has a different opinion, or if you guys, anybody who's watching this, if you're white, Asian, Hispanic, you know, whatever you are, just because somebody has a different opinion than you does not like you, you don't get to say that you don't have a black card because you have a different opinion. Like, why don't you just listen to the merits of somebody's argument and then judge it based off the argument? Like, there's so much hysteria. People think people have been trained over the past, I want to say 10 years, that if you're the most hysterical in the argument, then you win. And they get all their other friends who are just hysterical and don't don't do any critical thinking in arguments. Um, they try to get everybody to just join in and they're screaming. And, you know, they'll, they'll try a tweet storm or Instagram post. They'll try to post reviews about a company. And then, like, it, it just turns into people thinking like high schoolers or worse yet, middle schoolers as grown adults. Uh, so that's what I want to say about that front. Now on the flip side of that, Kanye had been, you know, ha having some very dark themes in his videos. Um, you know, it says that 
He came out with the lyrics of a song, include the phrase, God save me from this crash just so I could beat Pete Davidson's ASS. And uh, in the animation, Kanye kidnaps a clay figure with a close resemblance to Davidson and dismembers it before burying it. Um, what's the most troubling about the whole situation is that, you know, Kanye has been trying to find his path back to God. And as a Christian, th- there needs to be people around you. And this is the part I really want to get people to understand is that there needs to be people around you who love you enough to check you. A lot of people's definition of love these days is that you affirm whatever I have to say. If you love me, you know, they say love is love and all this other stuff. If you love me, you affirm whatever I have to say. From the Christian worldview, the different point of view, God is love, not love is love. Love is love is a circular statement that means nothing. You're defining a word with the same word. It, you can't, that's not a definition. God is love would be all encompassing. So from the Christian worldview, God is love, meaning that anything I do or say or or act in or think, I'm trying to follow what God would have for me. So when Kanye presents himself as as trying to do that, I mean, he's in the public eye, so it's going to be scrutinized. But when he presents, presents himself as trying to do that, and then he has stuff like this in his videos, it's not a good look. For, for everybody who's not a Christian at all or doesn't even believe in God at all because they might think, well, Kanye said that, you know, he was trying to find God and, you know, he's going down this path afterwards and all this stuff. So this is why it's important to have friends around you. Um, in Kanye's instance, he needs brothers in Christ around him that will be able to actually tell him the truth, not, not what he wants to hear, not you're afraid because he's my friend, not... You know, I have allegiance to my friend. Firstly and foremost, you have allegiance to God, which means if your friend is tripping, you check him. It's there's a big difference between I want to bring my brother back to Christ, back to center, and I just want to judge everything you do. So if you walk somebody through, hey, here's where God says that this is off par, then that at that point is between them and God. Look, I, I reminded you again what God said, and you're deciding now that you want to go do all your own thing, but at least I loved you enough to to check you in this. Uh, so it is you know problematic all the way around. I do want to say that Trevor Noah, I think, did a good job overall in you know trying to want the best for, for Kanye in this instance. Um, he, he's been the most level headed response. I'll, I'll say, (coughs) I think, um, there's, there's really not much level headedness coming out of, you know, Pete Davidson or, or Kanye at this point. Um, I, I really don't know much of what Kim has had to say, but, uh, another point I, I will address in this is that, This is a big reason just going back to, you know, Kanye and Kim being married. And what a lot of people don't realize with Christians is there's, there's a reason why God says that he hates divorce. Um, whenever God brings something together, he says, he says, don't separate it. So whenever you yoke yourself, whenever you bring yourself together and share a life with somebody who's not a follower of, of Christ, then that's just going to spell trouble for you. I'm not saying that this is the reason why Kanye is acting out, but it's a contributing factor of him doing something that God said, God already said, don't do it. And then you bring yourself into it and you're still trying to serve God, but you bring yourself into the situation that God said, Hey, don't do this. Um, that's why you need people around you who can show you what God said, not just what they think, not what they think is true, not telling you live your truth, whatever that means. Hey, this is what God says is true. You should probably follow this. And then when they don't, it might, it might look good for five years, might look good for 10 years, might look good for 15 years, might look good for 20 years. Eventually what, what God said is going to come true. So that is my take on the whole situation. You know, you don't want to see it. You want to see somebody get better. Um, But from the Christian worldview, it's not just, hey, go see a therapist. 
Um, yes, that can help. Absolutely go do that when needed. Uh, but more importantly, he, you need to remind people who, who are proclaiming that they believe in Christ and follow Christ. You need to remind them what Christ has said, what God says, and be a good brother in Christ versus just an earthly friend. So uh, for those of our viewers who are not Christian, I hope that this explanation was helpful for you to understand from a Christian worldview on this. Um, and for all the people who do say they are Christians, let's be the friends that we should be, um, be the, the brothers and sisters in Christ that we should be to the people around us.